In 1831, 15 cents could buy you this much butter. Today, 15 cents will buy you this much butter. So what happened to butter? Why is it so much more expensive now? Or is this just something else? I mean, it's not like butter's so rare and extravagant that dairy farms need to be protected by armed guards. And it's not like rich people are licking it off each other's bodies. Um, maybe this has nothing to do with butter. Let's say we have a society where everybody does something. Jose makes the butter, Bob farms the tomatoes, Julie makes automobiles, and Susan makes birdhouses that are shaped like animals. When Susan wants butter, she and Jose decide on a fair amount of butter to give for a birdhouse. But if Jose wants a car, does he give Julie a lifetime supply of butter or something? What if Julie likes margarine? What Jose can do is trade another good, one that everyone can recognize the value of, so Julie can go off and trade that for something she actually wants. This good is called money. It could be anything from gold and other metals to cigarettes in prison. To be a good currency, it needs to be trusted by everyone as having a recognizable value. So when Julie receives a load of money for the car, she knows she can trade it in another place for things she wants. Today, we mostly use fiat money. We trade banknotes that basically have no value except the value we assign to them, but they have the same purpose and use as a commodity money. Money is just a good, like any other. This is not a dollar, this is a piece of paper that has a dollar assigned to it. Just like this is not a dollar, this is just a bit of butter that has a dollar assigned to it. But an important difference when looking at a fiat money is how easy it is to increase the supply of it. It's basically just paper. So let's say everyone suddenly has more money. Kind of like when money is printed by a country. If people have more money, they will buy more butter. As Jose runs out of butter, consumers will compete for his limited supply and the price will go up. This will happen for all commodities if everyone has more money. This is inflation. It's not an increase in the value of commodities, but an increase in the amount of money that increases demand and drives prices up. That's what happened to butter, and everything since 1831. It was just more money being printed. The price of butter can itself change, depending on how much people want it, how hard it is to make, and how scarce it is. If the price changes because of these measures, not inflation, we would say it's a change in the real value of the good. On a day-to-day -day basis, we don't deal with the real value, we deal in the nominal value. The nominal price of a good is the price that includes inflation. Nominal prices are what we see. The real prices have to be calculated. You can say what the nominal price of butter was in 2005 and what the nominal price of butter was in 2010, but you can't say what the real price is. All you can do is compare prices after factoring out inflation. We express the price of something in one year at another year's level of inflation. So let's say we want to see what the price of butter is in 2010 expressed in $2,005. Let's say butter costed $5 a pound in 2005 and $6 a pound in 2010. These are the prices we see, the nominal prices. If we take $6 and divide it by $5, we can see the price of butter increased by 20% from 2005 to 2010. But we don't know how much of this is based on inflation or how much is based on the scarcity of butter. So we need to find out how much the value of money has changed in this time. To do this, we have to use a consumer price index or other price index like a GDP deflator. For the consumer price index, what they do is take a bundle of household goods. They take the prices of thousands of products of food and water, housing, transportation, entertainment, medical care, education, clothing, then average them and give them various weights. They do this every year and when taken as a ratio to other years, it can be a measure for inflation. So let's say the consumer price index in 2005 was 107 and the consumer price index in 2010 was 120. To find out the 2010 price of butter expressed in $2,005, we take that $6 that is in $2,010 and multiply it by the base year consumer price index, the 2005 consumer price index, and divide it by the consumer price index from the year we're working from, the 2010 consumer price index in this example. And what we get is $5.35. And what this is telling us is that the real price of butter increased by 35 cents from 2005 to 2010. Because there is a distinction between real and nominal prices, there's also a distinction between real and nominal interest rates. It's important to keep this in mind when discounting. When working with nominal prices, use a nominal discount rate. When working with real prices, use a real discount rate. In the next video, we're gonna look at discounting. It's another way we have to look at how value changes over time.